Did you know that out the box, Microsoft 365, Microsoft Azure, and basically anything that uses Entra ID supports bring your own device, but it really swings that security productivity dichotomy far, far away from security. By default, any user in your organization can download all their OneDrive, all their SharePoint, and any email content away from work systems and onto their personal devices. So in this video, we're gonna dive into the strategies to mitigate those risks using conditional access. So let's go. So we're gonna start here in the Microsoft Admin Center at Microsoft.com. Left-hand side, I'm gonna to go to protection, then conditional access, and I'm gonna head into policies. Now in my reference tenant, it's gonna load up a ton of policies. I don't have to worry about most of these, but what I'm going to do is find a few of them to talk you through the way we design conditional access to protect BYOD scenarios. I'm going to focus on desktop scenarios for this video, by the way. So Windows, Mac OS, or even Linux. And um, if you want a video on mobile BYOD, then let us know in the comments below. Let's look at it through the lens of two policies I've got in my environment. I'll head into this one. And kind of by the naming convention I'm using, you can see that we're targeting desktop clients. The other policy targeted desktop web browsers. And that's really because those are the two avenues we've got to experience apps and services, right? So the client app may be that full Win32 application, like the OneDrive Sync tool, or the Word client, or the Outlook client. And then we also have web versions of all of that, right? Maybe access through something like the Office 365 portal. Typically on a BYOD scenario, we either want to block all of that or we may want to block the full client apps but allow access to the web apps. Let's talk through how we can do that. I'll head into that policy and you scope it to the users you want to control that BYOD to. I get a group for all my internal users who I'm targeting. I've chosen to target all cloud apps. And then if I head to conditions, this is where I kind of filter conditional access and say, hey, under which scenarios should this apply? We'll head to device platforms and to scope this just to clients, what I like to do is rather than choose include, I choose exclude and I exclude the platforms of Android, iOS and Windows phone. That basically just leaves Windows, Mac OS and Linux. So my desktop platforms. Then in client apps, you'll see here, what we're seeing is if it is a mobile app or a desktop client, we've already eliminated mobile phones. So we know it's just gonna be desktop clients. Then if you drift your eyes over to the left-hand side here, you'll see I'm going to block access under my grant controls. Now, the thing is, I don't want that applied to my work devices. I only want it to apply to my BYOD devices. So I'll head to this exclude option here, the filters, and you'll see what I do is I exclude based on this query. The trust type, we set that to Microsoft Entra hybrid joined. That's how we identify on-premises devices that are also synced up into Entra. So it's almost a way of saying, you know, hey, it's a corporate device because it's domain joined. Or if you're using Intune, you could limit that to devices that are compliant. So you have to decide whereabouts are you in terms of determining what is a corporate device and then controlling it through this policy here. So I'm going to accept either a hybrid joined device or an Intune compliant device as my kind of corporate identifier for the sake of conditional access. We then want a supplementary policy. So let's head back to my list here and we're going to head into this one here, unmanaged web apps. So it follows similar conditions for the device filtering, where I'm eliminating this policy for all my corporate devices identified by being hybrid joined or in tune compliant. Similar platform setup. I'm going to exclude everything that isn't Windows, Mac OS or Linux. And then under client apps, well, this time I want to target a policy to the browser. So I'm going to handle client apps and browser apps differently. The reason we're going to handle them differently in this scenario, in this BYOD strategy, is if I'm at that E5 level of licensing, or I've otherwise got Defender for Cloud Apps, I can use this option here called Use Conditional Access App Control. You see here, there's a built-in option to block downloads. I could choose a custom policy, but for simplicity, I'm going to choose Block Downloads. That basically has an out-the-box policy to do what it says on the tin. So there we go. We're up and running now. This policy is enabled, and for my internal personas, if they access a web app on an unmanaged device, BYOD device, it's gonna block downloads for them. And they won't even be able to sign in to the full client apps through that other policy there. So that's our policies in the background. Let's now pivot over to the desktops and see what that looks like in action. I'm on a work device now. So in my case, this is an Intune compliant device. If I head to the company portal installed here, I'll head into that. So once it will just confirm that, hey, this is a corporate device as determined by it being Intune. Yeah, here we go. So there's my device and it can access company resources. It's nice and compliant. If I open a web app and I go to, let's say, outlook.office.com, 
well, it's going to let me sail on straight through. I could go into that email there. This particular email has an attachment associated with it. So what I can do is I can basically get the full normal productivity experience on my work device. I can download that file, no problems at all there. You'll see it sails open. And then similarly, if I want to use a full client app, let's go into Word here. We'll let that load up. You can see I'm kind of getting in without any problems. Up at the top right, we can see I've authenticated fine. So I'm good to go on a work device as determined by Intune or hybrid joint state, I get my normal experience. Now let's assume I'm that same user and I want to go home and do some work using an unmanaged BYOD device. What does that look like? Well, let's head over to a device like that and check it out. One of the big challenges of BYOD is just we don't know what we're dealing with, right? I've got a reasonably up-to-date Windows 11 device here for my BYOD scenario, but I don't know as an admin, is it riddled with viruses? Do I have info stealing malware that could take tokens or screenshots, things like that? Or is it a completely out of date operating system and just generally insecure? Hence why I may want to have certain levels of restricted access. And similarly, from a data security point of view, well, I don't really like the idea of someone being able to download their entire mailbox or all their OneDrive files and keep them on their home device even after they've left the business. So let's look at what that conditional access policy does for us to try and strike a bit of a balance here. So I'm going to go to the web apps and let's head to outlook.office.com again. I'm going to sign in as that user. Being a good security conscious organization, I got a 502 key here. So we're going to plug that in and get the user to authenticate. Here we go. And what you're seeing through that login process is that policy come to life. First thing we'll highlight is the domain as seen in the URL bar that changes. And it's reverse proxying my traffic through Defender for Cloud Apps. Gives me this little notification that my activity is about to be monitored and I'm going to continue. And you can customize that kind of splash screen as well if you want to maybe require terms of use, things like that. So I'm now on the web app. Uh, now, in my example, I'm using Outlook on the web, but any app that I'm doing single sign on through, this could apply to. So it could apply to my ERP apps, my CRM apps and so on. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to try and exfiltrate some data now, right? So if I hit this download button here, well, we can see that the download is blocked. And so what this kind of allows you to do is strike that balance between some degree of productivity versus that unrestrained exfiltration of data onto devices that you really can't trust. Now, is this perfect security? Not really, because I still don't know, hey, could an adversary have taken that token through something like an info stealer like we just mentioned? But we live in the real world, right? And we may just have to kind of gradually uh, increase our thresholds and adopt something like this as a stopgap. You could also use this as a temporary means, right? Where I temporarily allow some users to get BYOD access if maybe their corporate laptop is in to get refurbished, something like that, right? So we're already starting to see here some of the ways that you can take Entra, which out the box allows all sorts of unrestricted BYOD access and start having a balancing act. And just for completeness of vision, let's minimize that. I'm going to head to my start menu um, and I'm going to out open Outlook as the full client app. I'm going to sign in as that same user. There we go. You'll see through the sign in process, conditional access kicks in. It says, hey, okay, you authenticated well, but you're actually not authorized to access the Exchange Online resource through that full client app. And why might you want to do this? Well, whether it's Outlook as an app or maybe the OneDrive Sync client, those allow really quick and massive ways of exfiltrating data, right? Whereas at least on the website, through that reverse proxy and Defender for Cloud Apps, I can have some degree of control. So that's the logic here. And that's the BYOD strategy that you could employ for desktop applications. If you like this video, you'll probably also like this one where I talk about some common mistakes we see in conditional access and security assessments. So check that out.